The Watchtower organization has a policy it encourages members to use called Theocratic War Strategy. There are numerous references to this policy in their publications. Let's look at a few. The March 15, 1967 Watchtower carries a testimony from a Jehovah's Witness. I had been beaten by the Gestapo, and on the following Monday I was to be interrogated by them again. What would happen now, and what was I to do? I turned to Jehovah in prayer, trusting in his promises. I knew this meant the use of theocratic war strategy for the sake of the kingdom work and the protection of my Christian brothers. Hmm. From the Watchtower of February 1, 1965. It now became necessary to use theocratic war strategy in order to maintain desired contact with occupied countries. Got that. April 15, 1957. On meeting wolves, Christians will use strategy, being wise as serpents, yet innocent as doves, in accord with Jesus' direction at Matthew 10, 16. Interesting. So now we are being told that this strategy is being used in keeping with instructions from Jesus himself. What exactly is this theocratic war strategy? We get an understanding from the May 1, 1957 issue of the Watchtower magazine under the topic, Use Theocratic War Strategy. A witness of Jehovah was going from house to house in eastern Germany when she met a violent opposer. Knowing at once what to expect, she changed her red blouse for a green one in the very next hallway. No sooner had she appeared on the street than a communist officer asked her if she had seen a woman with a red blouse. No, she replied, and went on her way. Did she tell a lie? No, she did not. She was not a liar. Rather, she was using theocratic war strategy hiding the truth by action and word for the sake of the ministry. Okay, so they believe in, endorse, and obviously practice hiding the truth. But why? We are told in their book, Insights into the Scriptures, Volume 2, discussing the subject, lie. While malicious lying is definitely condemned in the Bible, this does not mean that a person is under obligation to divulge truthful information to people who are not entitled to it. People who are not entitled to it? Who are people not entitled to truthful information? And who decides which people are so entitled? Are you entitled to it? Am I entitled? Are innocent Jehovah's Witnesses entitled to truthful information? We will discuss this in video 4 and in more details in video 5. What is particularly dangerous and quite disturbing about all of this is how they seek to use the scriptures to justify this strange philosophy. The statement about Christians using strategy in accord with Jesus' direction at Matthew 10 verse 16 is an insult to the Lord. Jesus meant that in the matter of evangelism we should be crafty as snakes but innocent or blameless as doves. In seeking to win souls, we are to be smart in not doing something that will chase the candidate away. But in so doing, we must not be guilty of anything that God finds abominable. We must not sin in our attempt to be crafty. That is Jesus' message. The Watchtower claims it is not speaking of deliberate lying, but of holding back truthful information. But what a tangled web we weave when we try to deceive. They use Rahab's deliberate lie to justify their philosophy. Rahab lied, and the Watchtower Society lies big time in saying that God approved it. What about Rahab's misleading words to the pursuers of the spies? God approved of her course. The organization makes a big deal about knowing God's name. Do they know God's character? Never has God approved of sin, and lying lips are an abomination to God. Proverbs chapter 6 starting at verse 16 says there are six things that God hates. In fact, it says it's a list of seven that are abominable to God, but one is repeated, making it really six things. One, a proud look. Two, a lying tongue. Three, hands that shed innocent blood. Four, a heart that embraces wicked thoughts. Five, feet that are swift to run to mischief. Six, a witness, including a Jehovah's Witness, who tells lies. Seven, a person who sows discord among family. The fact that God permits sin does not mean he approves it. Rahab had good intentions in hiding the spies. Of that God could approve. Certainly not her lying. 
God, as he does for you and me, looked beyond her sin and extended his grace. The watchtower itself told us that she had not yet abandoned her worldly ways. God did not need Rahab to lie any more than he needed Moses to murder an Egyptian. Would the watchtower argue that God approved Jacob's course of stealing his brother's birthright because God blessed him immensely? The unholy interpretation of scriptures continues. They claimed that the lady who lied to the Gestapo had, get this, good scriptural precedent, citing Abraham and other patriarchs. Of Abraham lying about Sarah, they argued he was not under obligation to divulge truthful information to people who were not entitled to it. God himself intervened and warned the king if he dared sleep with Sarah. The king was not amused when he confronted Abraham about the lie. He was entitled to the truth, unlike the Watchtower claims. But it gets worse. Even Jesus Christ did not give full details or direct answers when doing so could have brought unnecessary harm. They want to bring Jesus into their practice of withholding truthful information from people who are not entitled to it, claiming the Master was preventing unnecessary harm and citing biblical references. The first one is his advice not to give what is holy to dogs and pearls to swine. That means you should not give to people things they are not in a position to appreciate. Christ was not suggesting that some people are like dogs or pigs, not deserving of or entitled to truthful information. They reference Jesus not answering when asked why his disciples did not wash hands before eating. He pointed to their hypocrisy and that they were majoring in minor things. What unnecessary harm was Jesus preventing here? And what is the truthful information he refused to divulge? There are numerous instances where Jesus refused to give direct answers or even refused to answer questions for various reasons. Reasons like knowing the intentions of his questioners and choosing not to go down a particular road with them. At times he used parables instead of a direct answer. Can they point to one instance where Jesus lied like the lady did to the Gestapo or Rahab did to the soldiers? Unbelievable. Why on earth would a Christian organization openly subscribe to such a shameful policy of hiding truthful information? Do they use theocratic war strategy on their own? Of course, there is no occasion for use of war strategy when dealing with our own brothers. In dealing with them, we tell the truth or tactfully remind them that what they seek does not concern them. In subsequent videos, we will see just how truthful that statement is about telling their own the truth. But from that statement just read, it is indeed implied that they do use theocratic war strategy on their own, tactfully reminding them that what they seek to know does not concern them. Is that not the same as saying they are not entitled to it? Remember, this is the same organization that asked, can you be true to God yet hide the fact? Of the Watchtower, I will say what they said of the Catholic Church. There is sufficient information about the Watchtower to show her shortcomings. The Bible is filled with inspired texts that expose as false her doctrines and practices, and I will use such truths to fight falsehood, not becoming a falsifier myself. In video 5, we will discuss how the society uses theocratic war strategy to keep members in the dark. But first, in the next video, we will examine the organization's biggest lie.